Productivity AI. Today, we're going to give you a guide to understanding this mental world of productivity AI and what it means for the future of productivity apps. We will cover the worries you might have, how to pick the best ones, and a little bit about where we see this going in the near future. So welcome, my name is Francesco, welcome to Keep Productive. I'm super excited to have you and I'm interested in this area of productivity AI. I'm going to be playing around with it and it's very, very interesting. So I think you'll gain a lot of value from today's video. So let's start with what the current state of affairs is. And it's very much that applications are adding this OpenAI GPT-3 system to their applications. So in the last month, we've seen Notion, Mem, Craft, and Coda all add this ability, helping to enhance the writing experience that you have in those applications. So how does it work? Essentially, what this is called is something called generative AI. And generative AI is pretty much what it says on its tin. It generates things for you using AI. And essentially what that does is for example, let's say you're writing in Notion and you want to prompt it. Say you've got a bit of writer's block, you can prompt it and it will start continue writing based on the context of the conversation or topic, which is really beneficial. And you can also pull in things like research, summarize key text, and also improve translation, grammar, and spelling. So there are some even more or further ways that you can do this. Right now, there's a lot of different ways that people are playing this AI game. So Notion is coming at it from a very medium perspective, presenting some pretty decent ways to set things up. But we also have Mem that is coming at it from connecting your existing notes with the AI to help enhance it. And we have Coda who are already integrating this with some of their button abilities, which is probably something that Notion will do in the near future and using other in artificial intelligence like DALI. And if you've not heard of DALI, it's basically the writing, uh, the image version of the writing generative AI that we mentioned, helping you to create an image from a prompt. You may have seen some of the funny stuff online. So will my productivity app get this? Well, a lot of productivity apps, for example, likes of Craft, Coda, are jumping on this bandwagon in the last week. It's obviously a good bandwagon. It's one that can enhance what you're doing inside of your productivity application, but it's not necessarily some of the structural stuff that a lot of AI companies will start to integrate in their applications. I think as a snapshot in time, it's a very beneficial feature to help enhance what you're doing, but it doesn't necessarily go beyond that like organizing your systems, helping to um, improve the smart suggestions and things like that, and also presenting small errands to you that can be done by artificial intelligence. That's when I think it takes that leap and step forward, but this is definitely really beneficial as a snapshot in time. So what to expect in the near future? GPT-3 is just the first step for open AI. A lot of companies are adopting this technology, but it's definitely a technology that is meant to be enhanced in the next year. In 2023, GPT-4 is set to launch, introducing an improved core experience and definitely more data set to really pull in the power of AI with what you've got. And it looks like a lot of developers are enhancing the way that they can use this and really take it into more practical uses. A really good example of that is what Coda are doing with OpenAI in integrating it in with their buttons to help create and improve templates and community templates, which is probably the best example I've seen of it so far in productivity. So what does this mean for you and choosing productivity applications? Now, a lot of these applications will get generative AI in the near future, probably Evernote and many more. It's fairly easy to add this sort of technology. I'm not a developer, but at the same time, you can enhance it, you can make it better, you can make it more tailored for the experience, but it's much more of a plug and play technology than building from the ground up an artificial intelligence system. So will my productivity app get it? Highly likely it will get generative AI. So there's no point moving and jumping over to an app, another app, because they've got it. And we're also going to expect a price increase because of this. So as you can imagine, an API uses lots of calls with OpenAI. So we'll have communicate lots between Notion, OpenAI, Notion, OpenAI. 
and that costs money for Notion. So they'll likely probably put this behind some additional paywall or an additional subscription plan, which is natural for a company to make money from what they're doing and cover the costs at the very least. So what worries should you note when picking one of these? I think it's really important to check the privacy and data statements about how they're using your data. One example is if they're using existing knowledge and data in your application and combining it with AI in terms of being able to create or prompt something from your existing knowledge, how is that information used and how is that information encrypted and safe when you're using it? Because that's interesting whether an AI is actually using your information to train itself for further improvement, which is something that a lot of people won't like. So it's always really important to check your privacy and data statements around these applications and how they're using it in the near future. I think that's definitely gonna be a concern in the productivity space, but something to definitely note as we're watching this video. So in my opinion, productivity AI is going to be really interesting. In the next three months to six months, this is going to be primarily generative AI, but structural AI, in terms of improving how you're using an account, I think there are typically three steps in this process. The first is organizing your systems that you do typically, getting to know a pattern and being able to let the AI do it for you, whether that's organizing it in the right folder, moving something into the right place that you typically do when you've completed a project, and smaller elements like this. I think that's going to be a good step forward. Smart suggestions are going to be an ability that will really enhance productivity applications and it's much more structural. Potentially you could use something like GPT engines for this, but I'm not too aware of how that works. I'm sure somebody will help me in the comments below. And finally, I think the third stage is where it does small errands for you. Whether that's helping in the background to bulk out research that you're trying to write without having to ask you. And that'll naturally be a much bigger part of the process. So productivity apps are benefiting from generative AI and it's really interesting to see how this market is expanding for sure. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, do subscribe and do like this video. Share a comments below about which application you've taken on that has AI technologies and keep this video omnipresent or forever present in the comments below. Thank you very much folks and I look forward to sharing more in the near future with you. Cheerio. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you're interested in checking out some more, you'll find them here and also you can subscribe to as well. It'd be great to have you here to optimize your tool. And if you're interested in our new email newsletters or our Bento application, or even Tool Finder, which is a new tool that we've created to help you find the perfect productivity tool, you can find it linked in the description.